Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS YouTube channel. It's JJ once again, and we're bringing something to you really, really cool this time around. Um, as you guys know in the past, we've always been really interested in showing you guys performance metrics relative to multi-GPU configurations, and this time it's not any different. So as you guys know, it's uh, GTX 680 time. Uh, we've already done an unboxing, we've done an overview for you. Uh, now we wanna go ahead and give you some of the characteristics regarding what scaling potential looks like with this new architecture, the Kepler architecture, and specifically what it looks like under one, two, and three cards. So we're going to be showcasing you up to three-way SLI on an X79 platform and taking you through some uh, benchmarks, Alien vs. Predator, as well as Crisis 2 with the DX11 patch and the high-resolution pack, and let you see what it looks like under Kepler and uh, up to a three-way configuration. So as you can see here, we've got the cards all decked out. We're going to go ahead and get these thrown up on our test bed and uh, get this thing started. <laughs> So we've got actually everything installed. As you can see here, we've got our three GTX 680s installed on our test bed. So let's go ahead and go over the actual test bed specifics. Uh, first and foremost, we've got actually our power supply set up here. This is a brand new PSU just coming to the market. It's part of Antec's new Platinum Series line. So that's actually over 90% power efficiency. So still a high current pro model as that you see HCP, 94% power efficiency. Um, really quiet 135 millimeter fan, brand new TC to DC topology design, outstanding PSU to keep everything powered, running reliably, cooled, and efficiently. Um, moving along with that, we've got our motherboard P9X79 Deluxe Series board, of course, uh, for the X79 chipset supporting three-way SLI. As far as memory goes, we've got a quad channel kit, uh, Patriot's 1866 Extreme Division 4 memory. We've got Zygma Tech's uh, prime CPU cooler with a 140 millimeter fan, the silicon fan grommets, heat pipe design, keeping everything nice, cool, effectively chilled so that we have a nice stable test bed. CPU wise, we've got Intel's Core i7, uh, second generation Sandy Bridge eCPU 3930K. We of course have the Asus NVIDIA GTX 680 GPUs, three of them. Uh, from their storage side, we've got Patriot's Wildfire 120 gigabyte. Um, SSD, SATA 6G, and then peripheral wise, of course, we've got our two uh, uh, Mad Cats uh, SciTech uh, uh, gaming series uh, accessories with the RAT7 for the mouse and then the actual Cyborg keyboard. So that takes us over on our test bed. So from here, let's actually jump over to the actual desktop and take a look at uh, some performance metrics. So what we've gone ahead and set up here is two different applications or game engines to go ahead and show you performance. We won't be running any synthetics because we want to keep things actually realistic. So uh, nothing like 3D Mark or anything along those lines. And uh, with that noted, we'd love to hear your feedback if that's something in the future you guys want to see. But uh, we want to keep things realistic to the actual games you're going to be playing with these cards. So. Um, Alien vs. Predators is going to give us a really good indicator of the scaling potential between the GPUs because uh, it has really, really good SLI support. Uh, so that's going to be a baseline in terms of what we're going to be showing you. And then on the top end, we're going to be utilizing Crisis 2 running at maximum resolution with the DX11 pack and the high resolution texture pack. So from here, let's actually go ahead and first take a look at, at a pre-run set of benchmarks that we have for one and two cards. And then from there, we're actually going to go ahead and take a look and see what three GPUs looks like under Aliens vs. Predator. So we're going to go ahead and jump into actually our documents folder where it goes ahead and uh, dumps out uh, our results files for us. So here we've got one card. And here we've got uh, two cards. So we can see that, uh, of course, we're using our new upcoming QHD panel. So we're running at a resolution of 2560 by 1440. Um, Aliens versus Predator Benchmark already goes ahead and fills into us all the image quality settings. But we can see that we have tessellation, advanced shadows on, anti-aliasing, uh, soft shadows. All that is enabled. So we're having a really high quality image quality experience. And we can see that with one single GPU, we're looking at a really nice frame rate uh, at this high resolution, high level image quality at essentially 60 frames, 59.6. Now moving over to do GPUs, uh, so SLI, 
we jump over to a really strong scaling result of 109.3. Um, so you can see almost essentially double. Uh, not necessarily uh, at a, a, a perfect example of a double scaling at 120 frames, but for most parts purposes, this is essentially about the best you're going to get. Um, so this really shows you the potential that the Kepler architecture, just like the Fermi architecture, has when considering scaling and adding in another GPU and the performance metrics that you can have with it. So from here, let's actually go ahead and run Aliens vs. Predator now and see what a third GPU gets us and see if we can go ahead and go for quite a bit more. So at this point, Alien vs. Predator has gone ahead and wrapped up, so we're going to go ahead and jump back into the Documents folder and take a look and see what 3-Way SLI has gone ahead and provided to us. And so we can see that we have a net result here of 164.4, so a nice increase really in terms of what we're seeing between one card to two cards to three cards, really showing you that uh, the flexibility and potential of SLI is really impressive. So when you take into consideration especially that uh, these cards allow you to go ahead and do 3D vision uh, surround uh, as well as just uh, surround based gaming, uh, it's really nice to know that you're going to be able to increase the performance and really get a great fluid gaming experience uh, when considering uh, multi-GPU configurations based off of this new Kepler architecture. So moving into something a little bit more current and even pushing the envelope further, uh, let's go ahead and actually jump into Crisis 2 testing and see what this is going to be getting us under the new uh, Kepler architecture and can when considering multiple cards. So here we can see that we've gone ahead and completed uh, a benchmark run and uh, see right here that we have our actual netted results. So this was all run at as you can see 2560 by 1440, uh, two times anti-aliasing. Uh, DirectX 11 with the high resolution texture packs on with Edge AA uh, anti-aliasing enabled and we had some really impressive results. I mean uh, the fact that one single card at that resolution was actually netting us consistently over 30 frames a second uh, with an average of approximately about 40 frames was really impressive that you could have that for one single card so really reinforcing uh, the world's fastest graphics card but um, also that you know that it was an efficient design and quiet as well. So you can see there in the three different maps that all of them essentially were about 40 frames a second. So let's move over and take a look at the results from two cards. We can see moving over here now to two cards that we've gone ahead and had some uh, sizable increase as well. Uh, not necessarily the same level that we have um, in regards to Aliens vs. Predator, but also keep in mind that we're running actually a beta driver stack here. This is not even the final drivers, and as always, NVIDIA is going to do a great job at continuing to mature these drivers and get more performance out of them as they continue to fine-tune the architecture and all the enhancements that they're going to be bringing with the drivers. So I would definitely not be surprised at all to see these uh, performance metrics increase quite a bit, especially for SLI over the next couple of months. So that's a definite benefit that we're taking a look at the kind of the minimum level of performance increase. So taking 
taking a look at our secondary results here, we've got now 74, 73, and 74. Um, so still a really nice tangible increase going from one card to two cards. Um, at that same corresponding resolution, so even giving us much better fluidity. And uh, the great thing about that is, is that now we've consistently kind of locked in at over 60 frames a second, so really giving us a nice level of performance, nice level of fluidity, and helping to reduce any of the sometimes latency um, or kind of response that you can have when you're dropping closer to, let's say, 25 to 30 frames. So with that noted, let's take a look at what three-way scaling is going to look like in the game. So let's go ahead and kick it in, and uh, let's go through these benchmarks and see what happens. Okay, so the uh, Crisis Benchmark tool just finished up, so we're just going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the saved results that we have here from that third run, and we're going to go ahead and do that quick compare and contrast from essentially one card, two card, and now three cards uh, for the GTX 680 and what we're looking at for Crisis 2. So once again to recap, here we've got run one, uh, we're essentially averaging about 40 frames, and then we go over to run two where we were looking at a little bit over 70 frames, so about uh, 74, essentially. And now we're going to jump over to run three. So for run three, we can see that uh, we continue to have a really nice scaling result uh, going over to 96, uh, approximately for the first two actually scenes, and then actually a little bit over 100 uh, for the last scene. So overall, some really nice consistent scaling, even when you take into an engine that hasn't necessarily always been um, the best at scaling uh, multiple GPUs, uh, but still being able to give us a really nice increase, especially at these higher resolutions with uh, a lot of the really high level image quality settings you have available to you. So, of course, there's tons of other game engines that are out there where you're going to continue to see impressive scaling results. Um, you know, in our internal analysis, as well as what NVIDIA showcase, you know, things uh, ranging from like Battlefield 3 to Witcher, uh, Need for Speed, all saw impressive runs, especially once you started to really pump up that resolution, get up to 2560. It wasn't uncommon that overall this architecture was able to provide, you know, 70 to 80 percent plus scaling results when considering multi-GPUs. Um, so definitely 
considering also the fact that you've got the GPU boost architecture in play, you've got the redesigned thermal assembly, you have uh, some adjustments in terms of the spacing profiling support to allow for more air to be drawn in uh, so that this design is allowed to have more efficient, more effective cooling operation, as well as you probably heard in, uh, in the video, uh, fairly quiet operation even under multi-GPU configurations. So overall, pretty impressive stuff. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, we'd love for you to drop them there, uh, there uh, here on the YouTube page, or hit us up on any of our social media channels like Facebook or Twitter. Uh, and as always, thank you guys for watching.